There we go. Everybody's here. The party is all here. Ladies and gentlemen, the Mendel yeah. Experiment! Yeah. Fuck yeah. Yes! Like, that was a fucking, that was an old deal. Like, <laughs> Dude. I tried uh, doing it on my computer, and it kept asking me to sign in or, or enter the meeting uh, uh, ID or whatever, and... I just got stuck there. That's so weird that because was, we we don't have a meeting ID or anything like that. It's usually just click it. But that it, was me too. So like I could create an account, and it was like, oh well, you already have an account because I I'm an X plus. So of course I have a Microsoft account, and of course the Microsoft version of Google. Above control everything. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> that's why it locked me out because it was like, oh, you're trying to like have somebody's account. No, I didn't realize that we had one. Oh, no worries. We're, we're the we're the odd man out who everybody picked Zoom and when when COVID was happening and I was like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use Microsoft Teams and everyone was just like, why, dude? Everyone uses Zoom. I just went the other route. I need to be willing to do that. Yeah, I was like, I was like. Of <laughs> Nate, where where are you at right now? I'm at my house. <laughs> oh, okay, just looks like. My oh, okay, I got you. Well, fellas, I, I appreciate you joining. Um, Spaz helped set this up, so thank you, Spaz. But the mind over matter uh, experience is, is so is so impactful. And I know that I know that you guys have overcome serious. There's a lot of background noise, but I know that you guys have overcome uh, just serious serious. Uh, conditions to get where you are in your musical career and if, if someone's watching that's unfamiliar with your guys music can you just talk to us for a second about how you got to where you are now as far as musicians uh, Nate you wanna you wanna go first nah, it's all you man like you are the I think man. it's like you know, I growing up, I always realized I had like a, a really unique story, and I knew that I wanted to pursue music as a career. And initially, I thought it wouldn't be possible for me, so I was trying to be a record producer, make records in Hollywood, and the whole thing. And then that kind of naturally fell away, and uh, I went back to playing music, playing guitar. And then I knew that if I could, in the back of my mind, if I could get everything to, together and connected, but I could get people to support me. And, you know, Monkey kind of solidified that whole, that, that whole vision, that ideology in the back of my head. He solidified it when, when he said, like, why don't you just do it yourself? and like build it around you so that's what i did and like how'd you find nate how'd you find nate like how we got where we are is just 10 years of playing shows hard work and yeah uh brandon and i actually I, met at a uh at a show that we played together i was in a different band um i was in this uh band called opera of the Damned. we were kind of a shock rock kind of band like Alice Cooper you know Bane cool and uh we got introduced that night it was his 31st day <laughs> I met his mom and his sister and uh, uh I didn't know he had cer cerebral palsy uh you know that night because he was so drunk <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. I just figured that's just that's just you know him being drunk but uh yeah. like I think we hung out like the next day or something like that and say, like, oh, okay. <laughs> He's kind of goofy like I am. And, uh, like, when we played the show together, I dug his band. I was like, holy crap, these guys just, like, this, this is the kind of music I like. Like, uh, they had, uh, vocal harmonies and, you know, all kinds of stuff going on. And, uh, I was like, right on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to this dude because, like, we're both... <laughs> you know, we're both cool. We both like 
rankings and, uh, you know, hockey. And uh, um, he told me more about, like, what the Minute Hall experiment was about uh, and his disability, which is cerebral palsy. And, and I got it, like, right away because I'm blind and deaf. And, you know, playing in, in the local scene up to that point, like, it was always a thing after the show, like, hearing about, like, me being deaf or whatever. People would be like, whoa, I had no idea you were deaf, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, you know, yay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> but Brandon's band was all about putting the disability first, you know, kind of like, it's, there's a lot of people that are goofy, goofy bodies like us and, and, and rock. So, hell yeah, I was, I was in for the class, like, right away. That is cool. Spaz, I yeah. know you have a, a ton of questions for the fellas. Go ahead and shoot some off, sir. A quick, a quick story, though. When I first met Nate, I thought he had CP, and I hadn't met Brandon yet. I was at Vetrax Fest. I remember I'm like, oh, you're a CP guy. You're like, no, no that's, that's Brandon. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Brandon's like, and of course, I, I know, and again, watch the, watch the movie. Brandon's love for corn, my love for corn. It, it's one of those deep and rich things. Things that's like part of your soul, and I'm like, yeah, dude, check out my tattoo. And he's like, well, check out mine. I'm like, ah, oh, mine's bigger than yours. But um, <laughs> so we had such a wonderful time hanging with you guys at Vet Tracks. I and you don't have to. I mean, you can answer it as PC as you want. I don't know what happened, but the shift from Mario was that just. I mean, having a female front singer is a little different for you guys. Like, like. Very simply, man, Mario had kids. He had he had mm-hmm. two two kids nine months apart, and Mario now, do you want to Mario was always so eclectic, and he always like was hanging on by a thread, yeah, like completely yeah. really yeah. like, the whole, whole time, and he's like head over heels for music, and he'll do anything to do this, and. <laughs> I think we all knew as a band, like, his kids needed him either. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, his music can come out. It would, it would make touring, like, very complicated for you guys, I would guess. Mm-hmm. Touring was already complicated. Gotcha. And then, yeah. You know, to add that, and, and just, uh, we wanted him to put his children first. So, how, so we have to tell him So how, how did you find Alice from from there? He actually, she was in a relationship with my drummer, like the long term relationship with uh, just. And, well, and, and, and her friend Justin Sands used to open for us when we would uh, tour through the area. Hold on one second, hold on one second. Spaz, is that you guys with the TV on? Hold on one second. Yeah, we can hear, we can hear all that stuff. My bad. Nate, I'm sorry. Yeah. Sorry, wait. Oh. So, yeah. uh, I'm just asking about, just asking about Alice, but uh, I know Spaz has a lot more questions for you guys. For sure. Well, at least and Justin. At least, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. At least. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, sorry. We, we had Alex, uh, we had an Alex, uh, our guitar for a short amount of time. I think that's why we were like, well. <laughs> but, um, yeah. And, and she wailed. Like, she wailed in, in the band she was in, you know, when we, when we played with them in, in Illinois. And we were like, hey, if there's ever a chance. For, for her to sing? I, I, yeah. think, I think we all kind of knew it because every time, like they said, we would come to my hometown, I would throw mm-hmm. them on as the opener because Justin was the original drummer of CMX. Like, it basically, yeah. the band started in mm-hmm. his garage. Like, when it came to testing it with me and him. Mm. And, like, so I was putting it on, and I always knew, like, she's a fucking killer singer. So it was kind of like a no-brainer, like, and it was, it was more of a joke. It was like, hey, you ready to come sing for TMX yet? And then it became Ali. Hell yeah! It it just kind of worked out. <laughs> that's that's awesome that it worked out. Uh, yeah. 
Spat, shoot a couple more off. So, you know, with, you know, I don't think you guys have disability. I mean, I know you have medical conditions, but I don't think that's a disability. I, I think that's like a special kind of power that just makes you push that harder. Now, for the, the people that are musicians in the chat, what would you recommend to them when shit just gets dark and there's no way out? They feel like they, I suck or I just can't do this anymore. What kind of words of encouragement would you guys give them? I, I feel like I suck every day. Like, mm -hmm. so let's just, like, start there. So, like, you know, a, a musician, everybody's going to go through that whole process of, like, I suck. I'm not progressing. I don't feel mm -hmm. good today. Today sucks. You know, you, you go through the gauntlet of emotions, but the key to all of this is just to persevere and keep going even even if you just do a little bit every day it's all going to become cumulative you can't build a brick wall overnight like you gotta build it one brick at a time so mm -hmm. you know at best like if you lay a brick every day eventually you're gonna look up and have a brick wall yeah i know that you guys were okay. that was good <laughs> I know that you guys were briefly mentioned about the trivia portion of the show, which I like to do with every guest we have on. We did, we do ask that you bring hot sauce. It's totally not required. It's totally not required. But I do see some tahine in the background, so I think hot sauce could be close, Brandon. Uh, yeah, yeah. Let me let me go hot sauce. I'll I'll play with you. Brandon. Before you go, before you go, I see you're a big Halloween fan. I myself collect a bunch of horror autographs. Is it cool if I go with Halloween as the trivia topic? Because it seems like you're a big Halloween fan. Hell yeah, let's do it. Nate, yeah. you, you're cool with that? You've seen you've seen the Halloween movies? Absolutely. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Uh, Nate, while while he's grabbing that, can you can you tell us anything that we could look forward to for the band? Maybe in 2024. I know some stuff's not allowed to be announced until certain times, but what what can you tell us? Well, we have a, another EP to drop, and uh, we're gonna hit the road in, in April. Uh, it's gonna be fun. Uh, it's gonna be a busy 2024. Um, Excellent. Excellent. I'm, I'm excited for the next the next uh, EP to drop. Um, when we re when we recorded in, in Vegas a couple of years ago, we did ten songs. We decided to release half of them right away, and then drop the other half. You know, and that time is coming up. So, who'd you guys record Chris, with? Chris Collier, uh, our boy. That's awesome. He's, uh, he's so good. He's, he's just blowing up. Like, oh yeah. I remember when we did the first TV with him. Like, he, he, he was he was on his way up, and now he's just so busy now. And, the price is and, the price is a little more expensive now. You could say. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's crazy. <laughs> Like definitely, right. they, they went up. But you know, that was what I for. And what? like with Chris, the the entire experience is like, you know, he works quick. He knows exactly what I want and need as a guitar player. And like, he's he's like the sixth member of the band. Like, I come in with the idea. Of the band we come we come in with basically full pre pro songs and then he goes okay we can do x y and z and make it cooler mm -hmm. and that's it and he does and he does that's awesome what what hot yeah. sauce did you grab i got some blueberry hellfire hot so sauce this, right here this is probably gonna kill me but it's super good it's the roscoe chicken and waffle. i hope it burns your ass it's the bro. reaper one so okay, okay. I didn't now now I know you're serious. I got I got about seven hostas right here. I'm gonna grab a hotter one. Brandon, no fuck around, man. I, I see that. I see that. Hey, is that from influence? So I'm gonna go with my my scorpion reaper sauce right here. Ancho wow. Mansala Scorpion Reaper. Uh, but to do it, we're gonna do some trivia about the original Halloween movie, the very, very first one. Whether or not you get the trivia right or wrong. I'm gonna do the hot sauce. But if you get it wrong, just take a little quick swig with me. All right, 
cool. All right, or you here can we take go. a spaz swig. It takes like three seconds. You just gotta. Those are the rough it. ones. Don't do that. You'll be <laughs> this interview will be over quick. <laughs> yeah, this doesn't have a this doesn't have like a grippy thing on it. Just give a little hard. toop, a little toop. Anyway, in in Halloween, I need you to now. These are hard because my job is to stump you. What is the name of the drug that Dr. Loomis tells the nurse to put Michael on when they take him in so, front of the judge? So is he. That is correct! Yeah. Oh, come on. Damn it! <laughs> You've seen that movie a bunch. That is a hard one. All I have is beer, so. Cheers, <laughs> cheers. Damn it. Damn it. You could like, ask what street it was on or something. <laughs> Oh, it's hot! You gotta, come on, BZ, you gotta get him. Oh, it's hot! Him. It's hot! <laughs> does when uh, when you guys when you guys perform, does does Elise yeah, play? Does Elise play the the songs that Mario did, or do you guys just kind of do like all new song set? We we do we do both records. That's cool. We do the whole thing. Uh, I know I'm not supposed to ask too much about it, but I would like to ask one question about just your experience of working with with Corn in general. Oh, dude, of course. I just said like no, like super personal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll leave we'll leave that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, what what was what was it like? Uh, I mean, how did that? How was that all arranged? Did did he did he just feel feel your your story and and did you like how was that set up? <laughs> Well, I, I've had a long standing friendship with Juan since I was like beginning at the age of 19 when I met them um, at one of those shows because I have a giant corn tattoo. I cut off my shoulder blades, like Eric said, right? So, like, I would go to those shows and I would show up at like 2.30, 3 o'clock in the afternoon and hang out by the back gate by the buses trying to meet them. Well, it was about my ninth show I think of trying to meet them I I was at the where, where the bus was pulling into this giant arena like in Peoria Illinois and I got there before the band showed up so I'm standing on the corner and the buses are coming down the street and they round the corner but I'm standing on and pull them into the, the arena. Well, I back then, I always not have a shirt on to rock the corn tattoo. I was fucking 19. So, like, I was trying to be cool and show it off. Well, as they came around the corner, Monkey and Head just happened to be sitting in the front of the bus. And they saw my ink from the window. And they sent their crew guy out to go grab me off the floor. And they, that's what they did. They grabbed me and they threw me in the fucking green room with the band. And I was just like, imagine a 15-year-old girl meeting Nick Carter from the back street. <laughs> yeah. Completely, wow. completely fucking stupid. You were wet. I was <laughs> like, they literally took me out of the room for a second, and then I went back in. It was, it was totally hard to, because it, it happened. It finally happened exactly how I thought it was gonna happen in my mind. That is and it, it happened, and then like after that, we we just kept in contact, man, via emails and stuff. And the movie connection came about because. The guy who directed the film, Sebastian Paquette, me and him became best friends, like, through Corn 15 years prior to actually filming the movie. Like, he was like, dude, he, I remember he called me the whole process of doing the movie. He called me, and he goes, it was on Christmas Day, 2013. Team, he called me and he goes, I got this crazy idea. And please don't take offense to it, but I think like we can make a short film and and you, the idea was to make a short film, like a 45 minute short about my whole <laughs> musical journey and my story and all that. 
we did the production meeting and it ended up being an eight hour production meeting. Wow. But it was supposed to be like 30 minutes. And he got my whole testimony on video and tape. And he's like, at the end of it, he's like, buckle up, dude, because we're about to do a feature, a feature film. And that's what we did. We turned my whole testimony and, and story into my of matter. That is amazing. Spaz, I want you to ask another question here in a second, but before before you do real quick, we're uh we're we're trying to get you guys said you're going on, on the road in April, right? That's what you said, Nate? Yeah. So maybe in March you might be free. I'm working with Youngblood, Nate Youngblood, to try to get still well on a show. Obviously Fieldy's side band. Maybe <laughs> if you guys are free, you could play that show also. And um I'll, I'll, we'll talk on the side details and stuff, but uh Absolutely, that should work really yeah. easy because we were supposed to do a show with Stillwell at the Whiskey or in Hollywood somewhere, and it was going to happen in January, and Fieldy gave the green light for us to be a part of it, and then it just got postponed, so we haven't been able to do it yet. But I'm sure if you, if you put it together, Fieldy's already given us his blessing. So Cool. Hell yeah. Uh, so we'll do we'll let spaz ask like maybe two more questions i'm gonna end it on a uh, a final halloween okay. trivia question because i gotta stump you but uh spaz go ahead and shoot some more off i do have to say though you know like when uh, bg booked us with that uh the whiskey show i heard about the january show through the grapevine and who was supposed to be on it and that was a, that was a good ah oh, that sucks i didn't know it got postponed but um i just thought it was funny because i asked brandon i'm like bro come play with us on 420. He's like, dude, we're going to be on tour. I'm like, fuck. You know, <laughs> yeah. I, I love these guys because they, they bring so much energy. So my question is for Nate. Oh, Bro, hey. what do you do to not like break your neck every night because you got the hair nato bro i know you probably use that pantene pro vitamin stuff and you take care of, <laughs> yeah. remember you take care of your hair and i know you do but how does your neck <laughs> how does your neck uh, uh last that long no yeah ant man ain't got the I, on that, though. <laughs> I don't know uh first couple nights of tour I, i'm hurting like hell but then you know after a while it just kind of loosens up you know it's just it's just a neck roll exercise, but like times a hundred. <laughs> it's true. That's how I, I view it, I guess. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. If you've never seen Minden Hall Experiment live, you gotta you gotta watch the video because he's just like, <laughs> and it's he's like got, <laughs> yes, there it is. Oh, he's yeah, he's got it down pat. <laughs> oh, the hair nato. Oh he my god. The best, uh, the best fucking uh, windmill in the business. I want things. All right, we so did, did whole social media series when we went to New York. <laughs> yeah, you know, we did a video everywhere. <laughs> talking to Brandon earlier because we're in LA, and he's like, "I didn't know you were fucking here." I'm like, "Yeah, we're hanging out with you know the kids, taking the kids to Universal and stuff." I'm like, "Where are you at?" And he tells me, "I'm like, shit, man, we could have hooked up because I love hanging out with these guys. It's just, it's good talks, good times. I know the answer." Uh, you know, I, I'm a cornhead like everybody, or the the corn fans are. Tell me what you bought, Brandon. I know, I know you, I know you jumped on that that uh, that corn and Dita stuff. So you might as well just tell us what you got. <laughs> you got the fit, huh? You bought it. I, mean, I got the uh, I got the the track pants, the black ones, and I also got the black shoes. I I hesitated on the purple suit. That's what I was hoping you bought was the purple suit. Oh yeah. I would regret it now. I, I thought that stuff was gonna populate in the aftermarket and like I regret it. I, if I could find the pants, I promise everybody I will <laughs> wear those pants on the next tour. I gotta awesome. I gotta do some research and I have, I do have one more question though. Um, corn is not an option in this question. Name your, let's just say you're the opener. Give me your three top bands that you would want to perform with as the supporting act for the, or maybe two, I guess. Let's let's say, actually, let me take that back. Your main support. Give me the one band you guys would just kill the fucking open for, and it can't be corn. Oh, man. 
Wow. He like <laughs> he put it on me like that. Like I um I'm really into like like spirit box would be sick. I wasn't we were expecting just that. about spirit box. Yeah. I wasn't wow. expecting that answer. It's a good answer. Yeah. That's awesome. Because like because they're they're really connecting with like all generations right now. And like that's where I want my music to go. I don't, I don't wanna be podcasting into a certain like new metal corner uh, of the metal industry, even though like yeah. I love corn and all that. I I want to uh to reach as many people as possible and like Spirit Box really impressed me. I saw them at the House of Believers about nine months ago and I walk in and my freaking kids everywhere were like of all ages and I'm like, Yes, this is where I wanna be as an artist. Dude, they straight up popped off. It was like one year nobody knew about them, the next year it's like every festival. <sighs> Sirius XM, Jose Manion got behind him and pushed him, pushed him, pushed him. Mm-hmm. Ah, man. Uh, I do want to try this trivia one more time. Get him, DJ. Get one him. more time. This, this, There's no way you know this one. I mean, this is like the hardest question I could find about <laughs> Halloween. The hardest one I could find. Here we go. In the original Halloween movie, there is a matchbook that belongs to Marion. What is written on the matchbook? You can see this in two different scenes in the movie. What is written on the matchbook? It is three words. It's either from a hotel or it's from a bar, but I do not remember what it's called. Got him. We got him. (laughs) Got him. (laughs) This time I'm going with the ghostly... The ghostly, uh, it's just called ghostly garlic right here. Cheers. Oh, man, that is. Thick. That was a good one. <laughs> that was a lot, dude. Be careful. Be- you should mix it with beer. It probably tastes really good. That's Ooh. the one thing I've learned with having to help co- or doing co-hosting. I'm going to have to, I got like bottles everywhere and I'm mixing them with my beer. Next time I, I drink like. Two, two hot bottles. Like, oh. Brennan, Brennan, while you're while you're suffering, please plug and promote <laughs> anything you want. Wait, so what was the answer, bro? Oh, I'm sorry. The yeah. answer the answer was ra- <laughs> You're probably like, oh, what the? F- Why is he t- rabbit in red? Damn it! You knew that? Huh. Fucking knew. Like, oh. Rabbit in red is the answer. I couldn't think of it, but I knew exactly what you were talking about. You have seen it a bunch. But yeah, go ahead and plug and promote anything while you're suffering on the hot sauce. Well, I, I mean, uh, if you haven't heard, the, if anybody hasn't heard the new record, Against All Odds, Against All Odds, featuring Chris Garza from Suicide Silence, please go to your favorite streaming platform, stream the album. We jammed it earlier today, actually. Go to YouTube. Check out the video. Share it with your friends. We have a we have a new record and like you know a full on tour to support it in April. Um, don't have an official title for the album yet. I think I know what it's gonna be, but I'm not gonna announce it because I haven't cleared it with the entire band yet. <laughs> so we'll just wait. But just know you got new music and a possible guest appearance on the on the on the, on the new record, and then well, you'll probably see us on some major festivals to be named uh, later this year. Oh, awesome! That is great so news. Some rumblings of like a return to uh, incarceration and stuff like that. So hell yeah. Well, gentlemen, including you, Spaz, I appreciate your guys' time. Thank you for for setting this up, dude. Uh, hanging out with Nate and Brandon, this is this is a lot of fun, man. Uh, I know we've kind of like seen each other at local shows in the area, but we've never had a chance to like really chit chat like that. Uh, so I appreciate you guys uh, taking some time yeah, with me, man. man. We, dude, anytime, man. Likewise, brother. Like we've never really connected. We've been yeah. close, like in my 
in the same circle and stuff. So mm-hmm. like, but we've never like. I'm like, how come we never get asked to be on the smoke out stuff? Now you could say you've been smoked out, and I was able to stump you on your favorite film. Now you can tell everyone I'm that. So, <laughs> I'm so mad that you got me on that question because I can literally see it in my brain, and I was like, I don't remember what the name. I feel like I've seen that movie like a hundred times, and I have if, I there's I didn't know anything about the rabbit in red question. It's the rabbit in red in. Remember the thing yeah. with the hotel or the bar? It was the Robin and Greg Inn. And that's where they get the matchbook. And it, it appears twice. It appears in the car when they pull up and they realize that he escaped. And then it appears again in in like a cutaway shot when they find like the the dead body from a guy in the tow shot where he gets the actual jumpsuit. Yeah. And then you see the you see the mags book on the ground. Oh yeah. Well this is this was fun guys. I I appreciate you again taking some time. Stay safe on the road when it comes to April. Please let us know when you when you've announced the uh the, the name of the record and all the release dates and stuff and the other feature you have so we can do our our part on our end and, and promote any way we can. But uh you guys were awesome man. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you guys for the to be a part of it, and thank you for being here. Hell yeah. Love you guys, man. Thank you again. It's so awesome to talk to you and actually see you. I wish we could meet up, but, you know, maybe we'll catch you around after tour. I wish you would have played with us, but, you know, uh, there's always another day, so just keep fucking kicking ass and don't fucking take anything for granted or wooden nickels and I'll fuck everybody else. Just do your thing. You guys are killer. Your music is amazing. Be good. Touch base with me on that still wolf show. Yeah, I will. I will. We'll, we'll, I'll link up with Nate and see if we can set up. They're not confirmed uh, yet, but he's working on it. It's looking good. If you, if you can nail it down, just know that we have a couple of members out of state, but if you can nail that down, that's worth it to get the band here. Cool. Yeah. We, we should know more in, in the next, like, two weeks, so it'll be at least a three-month notice. Cool. Hell yeah. Spaz, awesome. enjoy enjoy Universal and Mario World and, and all that fun stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, failure by proxy and the Metal Experiment! <laughs>